Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first race of the first season of the Truck Series. Here at Daytona, obviously, kind of excited to see where this goes. We have the 71 on pool, then the 23, the 33, and then the 69. Fittingly, rounds out the second row. I would go with all of this, but that's a lot, and I'm kind of excited to see where this goes. Yeah, if you sign up for this league, you know what your number is. So, uh, we're here at Daytona in the Mountain Dew Something Something Truck Series League. I don't really remember what I called it, to be <laughs> honest. Um, <clears throat> Jack Quinn on full. Um, I apologize to you, Jack Quinn. You did not get the number you originally signed up for because I could not find a number to put that you match. So, you got 71. I apologize. So, I promise. I didn't mean for it. But if I am able to find one, and or you're able to find one, and you can send me one that'll work, I will make it for you. And we are green. The 71 is out to an absolutely amazing start out of the trial. He will clear the 23. And he will pop out to the outside line. Trying to block a little bit of both, maybe. That never goes well. The 33 dips down to the inside. The 71 is going to have to go up high. They're going to be side by side coming out of turn two. And that 33 truck right there is real life NASCAR driver Jesse Awuji. Uh, through DMs on Instagram, we got him to agree <laughs> to join this. So uh, appreciate that, uh, Jesse. Uh, thank you for what you did in the military and what you still continue to do uh, with supporting our troops. So uh, appreciate that. As we have a three wide battle for the lead right now. And Jesse will lead the first lap. Very fitting. It'd be very fitting if you won this race as well. But. He will not lead into turn one. That's going to go to the 22, I believe that was. I believe yes. that is the same guy who drives the oh, whoops, uh, the 52 in Xfinity. So, uh -huh. Jonathan Powers. So, um, I guess chronologically in the timeline, this race happened before all of those. But, because we did, I didn't have all the paint schemes made... <clears throat> We did Xfinity before, so if you if you want pay attention to the series, uh, Xfinity's up on YouTube already, so there you go. Anyways, Wilson mm -hmm. Hunt will battle for the lead for with, uh, I believe that is, uh, check the 7 truck real quick, I'm not sure who that is. Okay, it's Matthew Campbell Young, I couldn't remember if it was him or his brother. And Wilson Hunt is the 40, no? Yeah, 40, yeah. Nice. Well, of course, Wilson Hunt will not lead. That's something he seems allergic to do. No, I'm just <sighs> but they're all shifting up. I find this really surprising, but the 51 will lead into turn three. And then he's going to clear the 98, and I think he's going to start shifting up, which will allow... Is that the 71 back in the... Wow. That's wow. Yeah, he's in the middle of the back in the And that 51 is Dylan Thomas. We've seen... Well... Chronologically, again, timeline-wise, we haven't seen him do shit. Uh, oh, my bad. Um, <laughs> we haven't seen him do anything uh, in uh, yet yeah, as of the timeline. But if you've watched these, obviously, one in cup by now. So, uh, but leading now is actually Jake and Sensing in the nine truck. I know many people would have expect uh, Dylan Thacker to be in the nine, but he is in the uh, twenty-four in this series. So. Uh, right now, Chad Fincham, another real-life NASCAR driver via the COVID pandemic. That's how old this series originated from. COVID pandemic and oh Chad God. Fincham. Uh, we got him signed up as well. Timmy Hill's also in this. Uh, I believe he's in the 56. It's either Timmy or Tyler. I think I left it as Timmy, though. So, uh, four wide right now. But that 68 truck side-by-side -side with his brother, uh, that is Will Sensing. So, that is Jacob Sensing's brother. I think they're going to settle out in the four wide, but we had a... Get you moment there with the four wide racing. It doesn't normally work here at Daytona. Yeah, you know, there's just not enough real estate for these very wide trucks, and they're all just fighting over the same spot. But I'm just wondering why they're always going up to the top line. Maybe they're trying to do like a 2017 Dale Jr. moment for the 500 and just have everybody in the top. But I don't know. Well, with less cars in the pack, I believe that that would work moving up to pick up the outside line and then moving back down but there's just so many trucks in the pack that they're 
you know, they get a big run, and by the time you get to the corner, you just have to the place you want to be in. If you look at that 27 truck on the high line, that is Brendan Reed. So, uh, doesn't race in any other series, so Brendan Reed is a special one here in the truck series, but uh, keep an eye out for him in the future in Xfinity and Cup. We shall see. Uh, that 18 is Gavin York. He runs all three series, so he's a regular runner. And the 44 is also a person who runs in the other series. That is Jaden York. Yes. Um, I had to check to make sure. <laughs> dude, I I went through Xfinity and trucks so quick that I don't remember who drives life. But Man, York, look at that York. 18. The that, 18 with the Dale Jr. inspired number eight behind him. And yeah, that is the eight of Ethan Womack, uh, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Yes, that is Ethan Womack. Yep. I'm not dumb. Uh, he also drives the Dale Jr. inspired cup car. So, uh, we always love our shout outs to Dale Jr. So. To any uh, legendary NASCAR driver, it's always cool to make a little bit of a callback to them. Yes, yeah, somewhere in this field is the 48 of Jack Seacrest making the uh, tribute to Jimmy Johnson. That's really cool. I got it. He's on the bottom. Now, we'll go back and take a look at that truck real quick. Uh, oh, and I see the 99 with the Jeff Burton inspired. Yep. Yeah, that's another one. But yeah, right here. Right that's here. Awesome. Um, yeah, that right there is the 48 Jimmy Johnson car or truck. That's cool. Um, obviously, you got the Bill Elliott one there in the back as well. Um, Mark Martin and with the 6. The 98 is John Andretti inspired. Um, mm. and then yeah, you got now uh, you got J Jeff Burton up front. Yeah, yeah that is Austin Flick. So Flick leads that. Track. He moves up to a high, to a high line, maybe just trying not to get an incident. Oh, there's a Matt Kenseth inspired car uh, truck as well. Okay. A lot of throwback. Um, I see a Tyler things. Tyler Ankrum somewhere in there. That's really cool. I see yeah. what I can only assume to be Grant Enfinger or Shadow Creed. That'd be more of a Shadow Creed scheme right there. I believe that's a but Cody Coughlin paint scheme. <sighs> they all ran the same thing. Come at me. Pretty I see much. a uh, Matt Crafton, Matt Crafton scheme. But it's really cool to make all these callbacks to these honestly legendary drivers. I mean, they're just so good to be in the uh, to even make it to the th top three. They dedicated their lives, and I think it's really cool for us to pay a little bit of a tribute to that in, a, in our little racing series here. 100% agree. I love the fact that all these people were cool with having these paint schemes. I mean, this is really just a uh, – paint scheme-wise, probably one of the best out there. I really do like a lot of these uh, trucks. Um, it's a mix from future and the past. As you see, a lot of the uh, Black Storm Motorsport trucks, they are uh, Ross Chastain inspired, or at least Nice Motorsports inspired. Um, yeah, I noticed that Wilson Hunt uh, had a real to life in this scheme. That's also really cool, to, really cool to see. This is another very cool car. I forgot about this one. This is a Dell Earnhardt inspired car uh, driven by Harvey Hunt, <clears throat> the father of Wilson Hunt. So. Another pretty interesting. That's another really cool thing. Uh, a father son duo. Maybe we can see them in the same round together. <laughs> I'm messing with you. No, but it, and you see the 13. That's what I can only assume to be. Uh, I uh, every monster scheme is the same. I believe that's Lorenzo Vallejos in the 13. Uh, some of these guys are just struggling in the back. Uh, you got Aston Martin there in the uh, 38. He's on the bottom there. Well, we have a uh, we've had the we've had a bunch of different leaders. Though. I don't know exactly how many, but I mean, heck, well, like literally a few laps ago, we seen that two car up front. Same for the 26, and they're all the way back in the mid pack now. So, um, yeah, and the nine car or nine truck, he dropped all the way back at one point, and now he's back up battling for the lead. So, really unpredictable about who's gonna be where. 
Um, you got the, uh, the, uh, Robbie Gordon throw back there in the 31 as well. You've probably seen that truck on the bottom right there for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I like the unpredictability here. I mean, we're, I, I'd probably guess about midway through this race, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of, eh. You know, I'm kind of excited about uh, how it's going to be at the end. If anything's going to happen, any cautions, any, uh, you know, any events, maybe some half spins by a couple of the drivers. You know, I'm wondering if tandem drafting is become going to become a thing here here late. You know, with all the passing going on, there's been a it's been relatively clean. Three wide the whole way yeah. through. We've had one instance of four wide, but I mean, it's been a really clean race so far. Which, yeah, we can't really say for Xfinity and those guys. They were actually relatively, you know, wreck heavy. I want to say. I mean, the 500 was pretty, you know, pretty short, short-handed on cars by the end of it. I don't really know how else to word that, but wasn't many cars left at the end. So hopefully, yeah, this race we can see a few more trucks left. Yeah, and the Xfinity series obviously had a very hectic ending, but a very, very, very good um, opening race. But, I mean, I, I just, I keep finding myself just gazing at these paint schemes. They're so beautiful. Yeah, and here comes some somebody we haven't quite seen up to the front yet. That 25 right there is Josh Miller. I uh, haven't seen him up front yet. And now here comes another driver we haven't seen up towards the front yet, and that is Michael Stout on the bottom. So uh, the right behind Michael Scout is Mike Mongo. Uh, he drives the, I believe, the 10 car in Cup, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, oh, and one of the Stesso Marshall... Uh, Racing trucks or motorsports. I can't remember what the team name is. It's either racing or motorsports. Don't fault me for not remembering all this. This is like 120 cars I have to remember. Um, that 96 going for the lead. Uh, his teammate is in the 69 truck. That is Taylor. <clears throat> the guy who happens to be in the booth right now. Don't know how that's possible. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I transcend reality. Don't question it. But we're three wide. Wow, that 96 apparently just pulled up. I don't know. I lost track of what it was. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just seen the 96 was in the middle. Double file up front. Wow. Yeah. Really thought we would be three wide for a lot more of this. Honestly, I, I thought we'd no. seen a caution by now. Honestly, same. I mean, we're getting pretty sketchy there in the back, at least. But I, I find it pretty interesting how, you know, these guys are, you know, they, they made it work out to a double file. And I think that's pretty cool to see, to, to see them work out. Yeah. It's ironic the truck guys are the cleanest guys so far. That is true, yes. Well, three wide. Chase Hansen does not want to push... The Chevrolet of Aston Martin, so <clears throat> he will pull to the bottom and go for the lead. Now, so the 15 car or 15 truck of Chase Hansen now leads. They're getting a little bit more spicy there as they go four wide. This could be trouble, um, but I think that 96 is going to back out of it and get back down to three wide. So we're good. Now the four car crib goes for the lead. Keep saying car, but you get the point. <laughs> car truck, Man, they're the same thing they have, These guys are on... Geez. These guys are on the edge of just... The edge of wrecking, I mean. We're three wide, just consistently. You know, it's really interesting to see how these guys are negotiating it with each other. You know, it, it's... <laughs> Ooh, it's definitely there. something. Four wide. Makes you nervous every time it happens. They're still four wide going into the corner. Uh, I don't have a good feeling about this. Oh, they're good now. Wow. 
how that was possible. These guys is, are doing a really good job at just settling out bad situations. Yeah, you know, honestly, we need these guys in the cup. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these guys have been very clean. It's, there's the 46, which is a car we've not seen up towards the front. That is uh, Guillermo Rodriguez. I believe I pronounced that right. I'm sorry, ABR. Um, oh, I believe we're four wide again. Nope, still three wide. Uh, three wide for the lead, Harvey Hunt. There's the Harvey. Wow. We've seen, oh, I feel like we've seen every truck leave this race at least at one point. Except for me, sadly. <laughs> El Bozo. Commentator's curse to a whole new level. Well, it looks like the 46 is going to lead a lap here. Behind him, that is Nate Anderson. Um, he's a, uh, being pushed by his teammate from Blackstorm Motorsports. Uh, let's see if Nate goes for the move here. It looks like uh, Rodriguez is going to pull up, and there will be side by side to start So, typical of what we've seen so far. <clears throat> it is going to be very hard to predict a winner of this race. There's just so many trucks left in this pack that I don't know where any of these trucks will be on the last lap. You know, I, for once, I'm not going to make any predictions. I just kind of can't. I mean, these guys are just so close, and they're so good. I can't make a prediction. Yeah, I have no clue who's going to win, based off what we've seen so far, at least. Uh, we're at nine laps to go, so we're inside ten to go, and you would expect the urgency to ramp up a bit, but so far, we're good. I mean, they're chilling too wide at the front, not really doing anything crazy. You got teammates on the bottom, and you got the 46 of Rodriguez on the top, and he got to run off the top line pretty nicely, so, I mean, if... If we can keep doing it like this and make it to the end relatively clean, I mean, I feel like a lot of these teams will be happy with that. Oh, but there's a shuffle at the front as now Wilson Hunt will go for the lead over Nate Anderson, so the teammates are not side by side. Oh, and now Austin Flick's going to take it to the bottom three wide. All the way downstairs. Uh -oh. Hunt will get left out to dry in the middle lane, but maybe here comes his father. That's Harvey Hunt. He'll drop down to the middle. Flick's going to pull up. He's going to try blocking multiple lanes. It's heating up. Here comes the 68. Okay, now the urgency, I believe, has ramped up. We just had three different leaders within the span of a straightaway. So... Wow. You know, and I think... The connections and the handshakes and I got you buddies from, you know, the season prior and the off season and after I think they're starting to come in and, you know, father son duo hooking up. You can see all these buddies starting to hook up. So I think this is where they're trying to tandem, yes, but at the same time they they're trying to make do on some promises. You know, and you, you could tell that with how many lead changes happened a lap ago. Yeah, and within this lap, there's only been one. The two car went to the bottom of the 68. So, it's one of those yeah, deals. Yeah, no, I find that, I find that really interesting. They're starting to the bottom again. And now we see uh, Chad Fincham get to the front here. Side by side with, uh, that's Ryan Bogey. Or Boogie. Not sure. Not sure how you say it. I've been told multiple. Not sure to this day. So, uh, Boogie Boogie. Whichever one it is. Call you both throughout the season so I can't say I said it wrong or right. Um, but hey, hey, look at that. Look at that. Taylor Gerald's going for the lead. Over Brendan Reed. Oh, this is, this is a good thing. This Man. is a good thing. being pushed by Michael Scott oh. to the lead goes Taylor can he lead the lap 
Pulls high, picks up Brennan Reed. Absolutely. To the line, yes. Barely. Taylor barely. Darrow leads that lap by a th- hundreds of a second. And now here comes it. Henry. Oh, can't get to the bottom of Scout, I don't think. Taylor Gerald might get this lead back. He might be pushed clear again. Not quite. He's barely clear. It'd be a bit of a cutoff. You'd probably get but, turned in this I mean, stage. the top lane. Probably. I think McGee wants to get to the inside. He's got a teammate behind him. So McGee has a teammate in the form of Sacker. Yeah, here he goes. So three wide for the lead. These guys are just... These, they, that urgency's ramped up, but we've not seen contact yet, so that's good. That's very good. McGee and Thacker are now side-by-side side for the lead. We've still got... We're coming to three to go, so we'll have three circuits, and there's no telling how many lead changes and whatnot we'll have. So, we just have to see. And now, like just like that, there goes the eight car to the lead. I think the eight team's gonna look to the inside. Might not be there. Yeah, the eight team didn't quite get to the inside of the eight there. Oh, and here they go on the back stretch. The outside line will have a run, so the eight might be able to get the momentum from the twenty-four and be able to stay in front of the eight team. But not gonna happen. 18 to the bottom. You know, we're coming to two to go. I think that this is about to get really rampant. And give me Joshua Miller. I think he's going to – he's far enough back in that line that if nobody cuts down in front of him, that he might be able to get it. That's a valid pick. That's I think anyone in this pick in this pack could win, honestly. Um, I think if you're in the – if you're not in the – if you're too far ahead, no. It's a Goldilocks zone. If you're too far back, no. you got to be right in the middle and honestly on the bottom line. I think Wilson But they're not shuffling right. They're not spot. shuffling like I wanted them to, so my pick looks a little hurt right now, but I, now that I'm thinking about it, he might just still be in perfect position. Right we're coming there. to white. White flag is in the air. Sponsored by some form of Mountain Dew. No one cares anymore. White flag for Brandon <laughs> Wilson, who leads them to the white by a narrow margin. Another hundredth of a second. To the bottom. There's a 31 car. <clears throat> that is Landon Spivey. And here comes that 40 truck. I think he's going to go to the inside here as well. So now the 40 truck to the inside of... Landon Spivey, side by side for the lead. Here they go into turns three and four. The 40 hey, moves up. up. There Here's goes the 25. Miller There's to the Miller. bottom. Off of four for the final time. I don't think anyone's going to get back in front Miller. of Miller. It's Miller. It's going to be Miller. To the line and checkered flag. Oh, let's Josh go. Miller. Joshua Miller wins at Daytona in a series. On debut. That he wasn't originally even scheduled for. Wow. What a debut. What a debut. So, as long as we don't have more than 10 winners, I believe, Joshua Miller will be locked in the playoffs. Yay. So... Congratulations, Joshua Miller, for winning the season winner at Daytona, and we will see you next race. After after this first race, what are we? What are our thoughts on the truck series? Very competitive field. Honestly, I think that yeah, very competitive. I think that uh, we it'll be hard to have a whole lot of repeat win- winners. I think that. Uh, it's going to be close, and 
even if there was a, in fact come down to the last race indeed we shall see we'll see you guys in the next race peace out